Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to attempt to restore this 20 year old Sony Vio computer. What could possibly go wrong? Stay tuned. Here we have the Sony VAIO PCV LX1. Um, this came out into England around the year 2000 mark. Um, there was a couple of variants on it. Um, I bought the main unit, I didn't buy it all together as a single uh, assembly. I bought the main unit back in February of this year, um, not knowing that uh, it had no PS2 mouse ports on it or keyboard port, only USB. It had um, Windows 98 files on it, but it wasn't set up. And when I tried to set it up, it wouldn't carry on any further. It got stop. It got stuck at certain points because obviously the mouse wouldn't respond because there was no USB drives installed for the mouse at that point. So um, I kind of gave up on it about that point. So I thought I'm never ever going to get a monitor for it that matches it because on the monitor itself, it has the PS2 mouse and keyboard ports, which of course is what you need to carry on with setting it up. And on the main unit here, there's a special connector, a proprietary connector, from the monitor to the base unit, and that takes from the base unit to the monitor goes the picture and sound because it's got its own two speakers built in, which is good. And then back from the monitor via the same cable, the PS2 mouse ports obviously carry the signals from the mouse and the keyboard back to the main unit. So anyway, I managed to get the monitor separately. It was some months later. I forget exactly how long. Um, I just couldn't believe I found it actually, I was uh, very very lucky to get that. And it was sold to me untested as well, it does work, I've tested it obviously. It has got a couple of dark shadows on the screen where it's probably had pressure applied to it, being in storage maybe. The keyboard, again I bought that separately as well. And this has got a little bit of dust cover, but you can see just how faded the top part is compared to the bottom part. It should all be purple. Uh, I know you can retrobite things. Um, beige plastics because this has gone quite yellow as well in places uh, in fact the actual cabinet is grey but beige plastics I've seen people retrobiting those I talk about that on uh, YouTube as you all know so maybe that's something that will be possible with it being that colour I don't know but that's something to look at next summer um, so we'll have a look around the back of the computer now then and I'll show you those connections I was talking about uh, obviously you've got your power supply input there VJ output, so it has an onboard VJ card. Uh, Ethernet, two USBs, onboard sound card, headphone, line in, microphone, eye link cable there, firewire. Um, Sony's proprietary monitor connection cable there. That takes the sound and picture to the monitor. And then back from the monitor will be the PS2 keyboard and mouse. Um, someone's added a USB card there by the looks of it, I don't think it would have come with that. And I need to add a blanking plate there. A nice early serial number on this one. Looks like it was number 28 in the run. I, um, I like to get some of the older stuff with early serial numbers. I don't know why, it's just uh, find it interesting. Right, let's take a closer look at the front of the main unit. Um, it says on the front there it has a Intel Pentium 3 processor. I think the speed is about 1 gigabyte. Um, it has 256, uh, no, sorry, 512 megabytes of memory installed. Um, I think initially it shipped with 128 megabytes. Um, there should have been a main flap here to cover up the uh, all the ports. But unfortunately, that's missing. Uh, I didn't get that with it. And along with a foot, it would have sat on a foot there as well, like a PlayStation. Basically, to give it a bit more support and just to finish it off. I'll have to keep an eye out for those. Um, I have a PCMCI card slot in the front there, which is unusual for a uh, tower computer. And then you have Sony's uh, proprietary memory stick slot. Yeah, another USB, a 4-pin iLink cable there, Firewire port. Power button, uh, status lights there, memory stick access, hard drive, disk. And we have a DVD-ROM DVD drive there, it says rewritable on the front. Now, I have already tried um, restoring this computer with the original VIA restore disk just there. But unfortunately they didn't work. 
Um, these are actually, I got these from Germany. Um, it says it's for the PCV LX1, which is what the computer is. Um, they're in German obviously, but that doesn't really matter because I thought what I would do is change the language settings later on. But when I try to install them, um, I get an error saying that these disks are not for this computer system. Please see administrator, which is odd. I can understand it if they were for a different model, um, because I've tried that before obviously. And obviously they didn't work, as, as I didn't think they would. But with them having the actual right model on, and it's for, the, you know, for this computer, I would have thought they would have worked. But they're not, so I don't know what's happened there. Um, also, the DVD-ROM drive is very noisy. Um, the clamp that would have that goes down on top of the disc as it as the drawer closes doesn't seem to make enough contact, so the disc is really oscillating and vibrating to the point that it actually scratched the restore discs, which is very annoying. So what I'm going to have to do um, to get this thing going is remove the hard drive, put it into a caddy on my other computer, copy the CAD files across from my ME disc just there, and set it up um, using um, a Windows 98 uh, boot disk C via CD-ROM, which I've already tried. That does spin up OK and doesn't vibrate too badly, probably because of the little amount of data that's on it. Right then, the next thing to do is to uh, open the main unit up, get the hard drive out, so we can uh, copy the CAD files from Windows ME there over onto it and try and do an installation. Uh, incidentally, one thing I forgot to mention before, which you probably noticed, is this is not the original mouse. Uh, I have been trying to get an original wire mouse from the ball in the bottom, uh, but I've not managed to find one yet. I suppose it's one of those items that does wear out and people do eventually replace. And obviously with the um, invention of the laser mouse coming out as well, uh, they were a bit more accurate, weren't they, than the trackball mouse, not trackball, the ball mouse. But I still would like to get one though to finish the system off. I think it'll make it all nice and complete then. Right then, let's, uh, let's get this thing open. To get the case open, it's just one simple screw there, which I've already removed. And you put your fingers underneath that and you just pull it towards you whilst holding the outer case. And the inside just slides straight out. Here's a bit more of a close-up of what's inside the computer and just a bit more information about it. Now when I first bought it, it worked, it worked fine, it all powered up okay, it booted, did the post test, that was all fine. Then several uses later, it was just switching straight back off again after turning on. Um, which I found strange, just turning, pressing the power button and it would switch back off again. So I thought, well maybe the power supply is failing, could be capacitors, because usually with a computer of this age, I mean it's 20 years old, uh, capacitors do obviously start to fail. So I tried out another power supply, I managed to get one off of eBay, the exact same model, and it did exactly the same thing. I think, okay, well, it's not the power supply, so it must be the power board. Sorry, the motherboard. Um, first of all, I checked the CPU, and I removed it, um, replaced the thermal paste, put it back on again, making sure it was making good contact, just in case it was overheating, but it wasn't because even after that, it was still switching straight back off again. So anyway, um, some time passed, and then I managed to come across the exact same motherboard on its own on eBay. So I bit the bullet and bought it, because I thought, I'm not gonna give up, I'm determined to get this thing going. And it's a spare motherboard as well, just in case. And I plugged it all back together, uh, put the power supply onto it, and it still didn't work. I'm thinking, okay, I've replaced the power supply, I've replaced the motherboard, what's left? Oh, the only thing that's left is this little PCB here and that's the power button there so I removed that, took it, unplugged it from the motherboard which is just a ribbon cable there um, determined which was the power connection and uh, shorted it across and it came on and it stayed on so I'm thinking okay so after all that replacing the motherboard and the power supply it's this board at fault and it turns out, it was there's nothing on the board as you can see, it's a couple of diodes there I think and the power switch itself, some resistors and LED lights. And it turns out it was just the actual power switch itself. It's one of those surface mount SMD switches and it basically failed, it was, wasn't it wasn't making contact properly. So I ordered some, I think it was like, I don't know, £1.50, £1.50 for about five. I 
thought, am I going to be able to solve this on because it's so, so small, such a tiny area. But I managed to do it and it's now working again. So now we're back to where we left off basically. So the saga continues. Uh, there's a closer look of inside. It's a uh, um, place that cover actually. I'm sure I've got a spare one somewhere. Don't quite like how it's just sat there. It's not actually screwed down. It's it was about to probably bend that back a little bit. Yeah, so that's that. Well, we'll move on to the next part now then, and get or uh, well, hopefully get Windows ME installed. To remove the hard drive, it's just a case of um, pressing these tabs in because it's already sat inside its own caddy. Just release those. There we go. Release the ID cable, power cable. And that's the hard drive out. So let's just create a folder for Windows ME to go into. I've already copied the uh, CD-ROM files to the, to the hard drive on this computer. This is going to take about eight minutes apparently, so I'll speed this up. So that, that seems to have copied across now. So that's all the setup files for Windows ME in a folder on the hard drive that's going to be going back into the Sony VAIO. Right then, after messing around for a few minutes and trying to remember how to get into a directory which I've completely forgotten about, we're now here. So then, here we go, set is now going to perform a routine check on your system. To continue, press enter. To quit, test up, press escape. Well, here we go. Let's see what happens. Scan this cannot read from the class cluster on drive C. This cluster is either damaged or your system is not configured properly. Okay. C continue. Oh dear, looks like we have some bad blocks. Bad clusters. That's probably going to take quite a long time. Well, I thought I'd just pop open the DVD-ROM drive to see what all the noise was about. Now I can see the problem. The little centerpiece there has come unclipped. So well, I hopefully if I can just pop that back down again without breaking it, that will resolve the problem. So that will stop it basically from making contact. So when the disc was spinning, it wasn't being clamped down properly. So uh, we'll see if that uh, remedies the problem. Well, that sorted out the CD vibration problem. Uh, all it was was that there was two clips out of the three had come down or come off. So it wasn't quite making contact. As you can see, it's spinning around now fine without any racket. Well, we're really making some progress now. It's, it's actually being installed. Uh, it says six minutes left. It's a shame that um, the original restore disk wouldn't work sometimes it's interesting looking back at the software they used to package with the computers back when they came out you used to get like slimmed down versions of um, Adobe uh, Elements and other other programs um, hopefully I'll be able to use these in the computer once ME's in to get some of that software it might, it might let me install it separately you never know because sometimes it's a two-part installation I and mean, it does say disk 
one of one, one or two of three. So it should be three discs altogether. I only have two, number one and two. So we'll see. Hopefully, um, all the drivers will install automatically. Um, seeing as ME is from the same era when this computer came out and it came installed with it, fingers crossed, uh, everything will go in okay. I do seem to remember that ME had a bigger driver database um, than Windows 98 SE back in the day. It's been, uh, must be more than 15 years since I've installed Windows ME. So, this is using that 60 gig hard drive as well that had all the errors on. I wonder if the sound will install the sound card. Oh, here we go, it's on. The sound. It seems to. Well, the, the uh, resolution doesn't look too low. I think it's 800 by 600 looking at it. But we'll have a look in a minute. Is that it? Oh, there's no sound installed. Uh, let's go to my computer. It says so reporting 504 megabytes of RAM, so obviously the graphics must be using some of the RAM then because it's got 512 meg installed. Here we go, so audio is not installed. Flash card with an Ethernet controller. But everything else has gone in. Let's uh, see what the resolution is. Go any higher? Oh no. It's a shame. It's gonna be fun trying to find those drivers. So let's see what's on the disc, if anything's usable at all. No, it's uh Source stream not found. Right, I'll have a look on the internet and uh, we'll get back to that then. So that'll do for now. So at least we've got ME actually in there. Right, we'll come back to that soon. Right then, here we are, we're back after doing a quick search on Google. Um, I found some drivers. Unfortunately, they're not for Windows ME, and not even for Windows 98. Um, I found some for XP, but you never know; they might work. What have I got to lose? Might as well try it out. Uh, first of all, try the audio setup program. Let's see what happens. You forget just how time consuming this process is. Well, we now have sound. Uh, let's just go to. There's usually some demo stuff here. Yeah, we go back. Just turn the microphone around. So that Windows XP driver worked. That's good then. Um, I, did, I tried the network one, didn't I? Let's have a look. Still not working. After a bit of messing about, I've managed to sort out, well, I think I've sorted out the Ethernet adapter driver. So let's restart now and see if it's worked. One thing with the old Windows system, you seem to have to tell them where everything is, or well, search for it yourself and then you know, point them in that direction.
Right then, let's see. That's working. Uh, oh, here we go. We're on. I've already plugged an Ethernet cable in before, so that's now working. Wow. So it opens up a lot more opportunities now. Uh, I can access my servers. Good then. That is. Quick network set up. Well, using uh, the old Internet Explorer, I'm actually on the internet with this. So what's this? Click here to set up one updates. Um, I've managed to find the SIS driver site um, for the graphics card. So let's see, see what happens. Let's see what we can find, if anything. Right then, after a lot of messing around, um, again, I think I might have found some other drivers. So let's see how these go. Looking good so far. I think it's worked. Yes, finally, it's worked. That looks so much better. Excellent. Right, time to get that blanking plate installed. Take a look at the monitor itself. Um, the clutch mechanism, which holds it in the same position, seems to have slipped and not gripping anymore. It has two points of movement there and there. there Sometimes it will actually stay upright, and other times it won't. This has quite a lot of angles of uh, movement actually. You can flip right back. I don't know why you wanted to do that. Uh, maybe there was something in the original software that allowed you to flip the screen. Turn it around, you can actually go right flat like that with it. Because um, in Japan there was a tablet version of this uh, where you had a stylus pen. They all seem to get the better models uh, in Japan. Sadly, the European version doesn't have that. Well, maybe it did, and this is um, just a different version of it. There we go. Ideally, you want it to be about there. But like I say, it just keeps on wanting to drop back down again. Well, we'll have a look in the back and uh, see if anything can be done with it. Well, five or so minutes later, um, after removing the bottom screws, which did nothing, it turns out all I need to do was unclip 
the uh, back covers to reveal the inner workings of the mechanism. So we've got two springs there and pivots for the main screen itself, then for the base of the arm, spring on that side and that'll be the clutch mechanism in there. But basically, obviously it's a sealed unit looking at it. It's just basically worn out, I think. There's not much that can be done with it. Sometimes it does stay up, sometimes it doesn't. So I guess I'm just gonna have to live with that, unfortunately. There's no way that I can see it can be tightened up. Just a circle clip on the end there, which will release the, release the pit, uh, pivotal point there out. Okay, um, just a bit of an update on the hinge. Um, this is I'm recording this at nearly the end of the video now. While I was um, cleaning the monitor up, I thought I'll just have another quick look at the clutch mechanism that stops the monitor from flopping down. I managed to get the circle clip off. Um, then there was a washer, then there was that brass insert, and the hinge wanted to start unwinding. Um, and I found that it's gone really stiff again. Can just about do it, obviously, without the force. So I think, I don't know why, just taking it out apart a little bit seems to have corrected it. Well, it looks like it has. So I'm going to put it back together now and, uh, and see what happens. You never know, it could uh, remedy itself. Okay, so I reassembled it and it was floppy again. So this time I've left out this brass, it looks like brass anyway, insert. Um, I left it out and it's stiff again. It's almost like when that's in, it's putting pressure inside. It's just making it floppy again, I don't know why. So I'm going to try it now without that and see what happens. Right then, after reassembling um, the screen, minus that little brass insert I mentioned before, it's now staying in position. It's quite stiff as well with it. So we seem to have success there. Um, I'm not sure why that's in there and why it's working without it, but I'm happy that the screen is now staying upright. How long it will last, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Um, if anybody has any information about those clutch mechanisms, or you know, knows how they work or what, why they go wrong, let me know in the comments. It'll be interesting to know actually. Something I just noticed on the back cover of the monitor, manufacturer's date code there. You've got 2000, which is 2001 to 02, so right to 2002. It's all dotted out for 2001 and uh, six dots on 2000. There's 12 segments there, which must mean one for each month. So it's probably made between 2000 and 2001 looking at it, because there's nothing on 2002. Oh, actually there's one little dot in the first segment there. So theoretically it could be as late as um, January 2002, when it was manufactured. See there's markings, quite a lot of different uh, things that I take apart. Also find that interesting. Right then, let's continue taking the keyboard apart so we can uh, give it a good clean. Because it is pretty grim. I can't imagine what's under all the keys or the grime from all over the years. Ribbon cables there, be careful of those. Very, very delicate ribbon cables. some uh, residue there. This is 
think with these keyboards you never know how they're put together until you open them up. They all vary so much. Oh, there's a couple of keys. There's the, uh, the shortcut keys. The other ones are all, all clipped in by the looks of it. Yeah. So it's just a matter of uh, pushing those two logs together. Inwards, and they'll all come off. I suppose it's best to do it properly, really, and take them all off. Right, well that's all the keys out. Um, I've got them soaking in the tub upstairs in some warm soapy water. As you can see, it's in quite a state. Um, there's all sorts in there, fluff, dust, bits of biscuit I think. I even thought I saw some bug casings in there as well, insect casings. I'll go upstairs now and give that a good scrub in the bathtub. Right then, now for the exciting task of putting this thing back together. Well, that's the keys back in. Thank goodness I decided I took a uh, picture first before I took it apart because I wouldn't have remembered where they'll go. Just going to give the membrane a wipe down just for some dry tissue because I can see some residue marks there. There we go, I think that looks a lot better. Space bar stuck down. Oh, there we go, now the space bar's incorrectly. It was the right way round, it just happened to be that one of the bars on the spring underneath wasn't quite in properly. But now that's looking much better. All that grime gone. Right then, let's get this thing set up. Right then, let's try a bit of Midtown Madness 2. Uh, I've had to lower the graphics settings to quite low on this because the graphics card is not up to playing these 3D games or um, I'm using 32 megabytes of memory of the system memory. You can change it in the uh, BIOS for 8, 16 or 32. Well, there we have it then, all back up and running. Uh, Windows ME reinstalled, and the only driver I couldn't get to work was the Sony card reader there, unfortunately. 
uh, who, but who knows, one day maybe I'll get the actual restore disc for this machine and get it back to the factory settings. Uh, we've tried a game on it, it worked. It's not really a gaming machine, it's more of a video editing machine, really just a web browser. Um, I will get my video editing software back in it. Um, I think I've got Ulead somewhere, or one of the versions of it. And I'll get my old Firewire camcorders plugged in. Maybe I'll do a video on it. Well, I guess that about wraps it up. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I have creating it and, and restoring this old computer. Um, if you did like the video, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll be back soon. Be seeing you.